So basically we're doing a YouTube video to showcase the best snake rack ever. Um, this is for people that have multiple snakes that want to do small breeding projects or maybe lead to bigger breeding projects. This is a rack that's pretty common. There's a YouTube video going on that's, this is a homemade, easy, 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 works just like this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's not true. We built one of these and we're here to show you the difference and how I got led to this Freedom Breeder rack and why the value's there. And we're gonna show you a couple of those things. So first of all, if you get in here and you look at the heating element, we use the flex watt, which is the industry standard, which is being used also in these Freedom Breeder racks, which will show you entirely the, the right application versus this. This is the third type of tape we've used because the adhesives, as they get warm, in this, and by the way, we ran this to a helix, which is the industry standard thermostat. It, it works, it does heat up, it does do what it says it's gonna do. However, this, this adhesive, as it gets warm, starts to emit an odor, you know, potentially some kind of harmful VOC. We don't know. We don't know what the tolerances are for adhesives and the stuff that's made in foreign countries. And it may be, it may be perfectly good to use for, for ducting and other things, but we just noticed that several times with three different types of tape, not only does it stick and not stick, it puts out an odor, which is a big deal. And I don't want any volatile compounds in with my snakes. I don't know if it's harmful or not. It can't be good because there's no VOCs in burrows <laughs> in the holes where they're from in Africa. So how could that be? This is what people, this is what a lot of people are using. I don't, I'm not slamming them. They do work and I'm on a budget too. We're not, we don't want to get blown up like we're slamming people for doing do-it-yourself stuff. We're not. Okay, but this just barely fell. Okay, look at that. It just shattered. It's, it's useless. No big deal, rarely do they fall. But what is a big deal, as opposed to these, this, this high-end, um, it's, what's the, This is called it? SMC, it's a sheet molded composite plastic. And uh, it's made the right way. Yeah, it's not as cheap as a Sterlite tub, but the bottom line is, is that it drops, it, it can take a beating. We've cleaned and used this one several times. Whoops-a-daisy, there she went. So you can to get an idea. No problem. Right. If you look, I don't know, I'm pretty sure the HD camera will pick this up. Oh, we're, you bet your we're bottom trying. dollar, she'll pick her up. And then if you look, see the color there along the white? Yeah, that's not mm -hmm. supposed to be yeah. there, folks. <laughs> that's basically, I was using some newspaper. This tub did not get overheated. Everything was perfect. We use, we use the digital thermometer, the real one. We keep the batteries up. We have two right. of them. We use a hygrometer for humidity. We, we move the rack as necessary to keep them optimal. And so one thing I noticed is that this, whether they defecate in here or, or it's newspaper ink, no matter, you can scrub and scour, it's, it impregnates in here somehow. So I question the integrity of these for keeping our animals in. For, for, and again, I know people do it with great success. This is just, I guess, what led me here to, to this rack, this, this Freedom Breeder rack. We considered building one out of melamine, which, which is another industry standard which professional breeders use with great success. And, and again, we're not slamming it, we know it works well. Just want to show a couple differences like vulnerability in the material. You can see this little melamine table that's, it hasn't been abused, but every now and then you'll just see whether it's a gouge or a scratch or something, it becomes compromised. And what happens is here, it allows moisture in here, and then it's, it could be a breeding ground for bad pathogens or mold or bacteria or the unknown. And then it warps and it bubbles. And again, the adhesives in this press board, we just don't know what's in it. And I mean, we're dealing with really expensive animals. And even if they're not expensive, they're animals and things we care about. Let, let, me, let me open up this freedom reader and show them one of the... And by the way, we're not affiliated with these guys. I think that should be noted. This is something that... We're, we were just really impressed. I went, uh, I called these guys, got their name off the internet. Professional, responded right away, um, had a bunch of questions. They were never uninterested. They went out of their way to help me. This, these products, from what I understand, are a lot of zoos across the world, like the Australian Zoo or, or some facilities in Australia and, and here in, in Ohio and other places. So even top, top scientists in the field use these. So here's an example. Here's, like, look how easy this just slides in and out. Okay. 
They've also added the convenience of putting these uh, pre-molded water bowls in that the deli cup fits in, which is real convenient for changing out and cleaning. Okay, so let's talk a second about the heating element. Um, this is the Freedom Breeder. You can see they're both using the 4-inch Flex Watt. We, we use the same stuff, okay? Um, properly soldered. I mean, soldering is rudimentary, so I mean, that's what it looks like properly done. Obviously, we put the, uh, the high heat tape, electrical tape that withstands the extra high temperatures for safety and all that stuff, we put that on there. And, and that's, as far as a do-it-yourself, I mean, that's about... It's not Jay-Z chained, it's only one plug going to one strip of heat, heat tape, so we've done it the right way. Right. So you can see here, there is no daisy chaining. And, and the problem with daisy chaining that people don't ever talk about is, if you have one of the legs of your daisy chain go out, then you lose your entire rack of heat. Not a good idea when you've got multiple animals. This has one strip, one power, one source for one piece of heat tape. Right. And if you look at not only that, what they've done is they've no. they've they've put this silicon in here to keep it's just it's just completely insulated, it's completely it's dialed in, you don't have to worry about it. The other nice thing about it is is that the metal, the galvanized, if you roll that over, it just it just completes out that perfect radiant heat. It really heats it up just right. So now your tub is sliding on the galvanized instead of sliding on the heat tape. And right. we'll show you that here in just a second. Right. And I think it's also uh, a good point to, to note that just the way they've, they've put this and married it up with this piece of galvanized, it makes the four inch, the, the way it emits the heat and the belly heat is, it's, it's just it's much more like it's more six consistent. inch. Yeah, it's more like six inch. It's more consistent is what it is. And it just radiates better. This stuff has some real hot spots. Again, it works good. It's just, I don't know, it's just not this. Um, got a cool lemon blast guy right oh, there. Yeah, yeah. I opted to buy uh, 10 of, with the water bowl and 10 without. Sometimes I'm in a hurry and I need to clean on the run and just that way I have an extra tub already staged. Uh, but these things, like I said, they clean up so much better than the Sterlite or some of these other, um, you know, lower grade plastic tubs. They just do and they, they don't hold the odor. These hold odor and that's a deal breaker. Let's see the 50% uh, ventilation too. Let's get this girl out of there. Oh, hello Bumblebee. So yeah, there you can see, see the, what they call the 50% ventilation, which is literally they just um, gridded out and drilled holes, pressed out the holes on 50% of the top. You can get 25%, you can get 100%. Um, you know, based on where, where, where I live and our climate, 50% was recommended and it seems to work really, really well, so. Here's another way here that you can see the uh, the inside part where the where the heat tape and how it resides, and then you'll see the the, the bowl just kind of or the the tray just sliding right over the top of it. There's no bumps, there's no bruises, there's no nothing. It fits perfect, and, and also this thing rolls like a dream. Yeah, it does. I mean you can just roll the casters are high end. Uh, the power strip that came with it, I mean, high end. I mean, you can you can get your own, obviously. Um, you can just see that even the way the cords get plugged in, like, you know, there's not wires hanging everywhere. The helix mounts on the side with a piece of Velcro that never comes off, and it's just the right way to do it. Another thing that's a great, something you can customize with these racks is that, let's say, you know, you're in an area where certain times a year, maybe the four inch doesn't cut it, but the 12 inch would. You can call the guys and order as a separate part just have these as replacements and put them in for those colder times of the year when maybe you need a little more heat. And, uh, but typically these work just fine. Yeah, and, and, and also the same thing is that when you really break it down and you consider the cost of the materials and the time that went into making this, I will tell you what, if you put any value at all on your time, wow, <laughs> any value at all, it makes this thing, I mean, yeah, same price or less. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So there you go, folks. If you guys want the best snake rack, period. Freedom breeder. That's it.